Take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. The tale of Henry Royce has been told on this channel. A young Englishman of modest means who begins his professional career as a scarecrow and becomes one of the great giants of the automotive and even industrial world, being both knighted and given life peerage. And something very similar happened in France at about the same time. A young orphan Frenchman would go from an itinerant blacksmith to one of the greatest minds of the vintage automotive and industrial age and receive France's highest decoration, the National Order of the Legion of Honor. And of course, we are speaking of Adolphe Clément. Hailing from the town of Pierrefonds in northern France, Gustave Adolphe Clément was born in 1855. His father, Leopold, was a blacksmith and ran a small local business. He would shoe horses in his smithy while his wife, Julie, operated a small attached grocery store. Young Adolphe was quite inclined towards blacksmithing and seemed destined to enter the trade at his father's side. Unfortunately, his mother passed away when he was seven. His father remarried a year later, but also died the following year, leaving young Adolphe uh, orphaned at age nine. Yet his new stepmother chose to raise him as her own and preserve the family business. He worked in the grocery until at age 13, he was old enough to pursue his father's trade. He sought apprenticeship with local blacksmiths and showed promise. By the age of 16, he entered the famous Tour de France. There was, of course, no Tour de France bicycle race in 1871. Yet the companions of the Tour de France had been in existence for over 500 years. This was essentially the French Guild of Skilled Craftsmen. Those seeking to be a master craftsman of whatever trade would join this tour, traveling across France to work with different masters. After many years learning from the best, you would be certified to begin your own business and in turn teach others in the future. Clément was naturally good at blacksmithing, engineering, and business, three traits that are rare in one individual. By 1878, he had completed his tour and established his own smithy in Paris. This coincided with the bicycle craze that hit the streets. Adolphe concluded that servicing these crude bikes and even racing them would be more lucrative for him than shoeing horses. And so he did exactly that. He entered bike races, even winning quite a few. He repaired bikes and by 1885 was even making his own bikes. He was also making good money and had expanded his operations several times. He was making a lot of friends in the business, including people like Albert de Dion and Alexander Duroc. And in 1891, he spent the money to acquire the rights to the Dunlop pneumatic tire in all of France. Being a bicycle racer himself, he personally knew how much of a difference these tires makes on a person's backbone. Clément promoted and sold bike tires like crazy, and car tires were soon to come. Clément had an uncanny ability to sense a market, and somehow he intuitively knew that cars were the future. His first foray into motor vehicles was in 1895. He used a simple single-cylinder gas engine to power a tricycle. An inauspicious beginning, but Adolphe had been bitten by the car bug. It was with his friend, Alex de Rock, that Clément finally backed a new make of car, the Clément Gladiator. First produced in 1898, their cycle cars sold well, and by 1901 were building some rather substantial vehicles. Adolphe was, by 1902, a very wealthy man and invested all over the French automotive world and in other nations as well. He invested heavily in Panhard and Levisor, manufacturing tires and, of course, promoted bicycle and auto racing. Indeed, he partnered with Albert de Dion and others to create a new racing newspaper, L'Auto. In 1903, the owners were looking for ideas to increase circulation, 
and the idea of an endurance bicycle race was put on the table. Racing across France on a bike would need a name, and remembering his own apprenticeship, Adolphe suggested it be called Tour de France. The name stuck. Clément was directly or indirectly responsible for the creation of some outstanding makes of vintage cars. For example, a certain English nobleman, the 20th Earl of Shrewsbury, was interested in motoring and wished to establish a car manufacturing company of his own in London. Of course, the good Earl was not himself an engineer, and so he hired uh, Clément to establish the factory and get things running. This particular venture would lead to one of England's great vintage makes, the Talbot. Adolphe Clément would be involved in many makes of vintage cars, both in and out of France, and we'll hear more about them in the future. He built experimental aircraft, both for civilian and military uses. He built some of the world's first airships or dirigibles. He owned and operated huge factories all over France and in many different industries. And, as mentioned earlier, he was decorated and honored by his countrymen for his contributions to the overall French economy and spirit. Imagine the future and then build the world to come. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.